Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward ben Ephraim, Shlomo ben Edward, and Yerachmiel Daniel ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Rafu Shalema of Rav Amita ben Shoshana, Shaul ben Brita, and Sassel ben ben Batya. May they have a complete and speedy recovery. This week's Torah portion is Parsha Snoyach, Passion and Happiness. Our Parsha begins by introducing Noyach, a man who remained faithful to God while the rest of society descended into chaos. God came to Noyach and told him that a mobile, a flood, would soon destroy all of civilization, but he and his family would survive in a teva in an ark that he was to build. He was given the ark's dimensions and commanded to bring seven of every kosher animal and a pair of every non-kosher animal along in the teva. Noyach did as he was commanded. He began to slowly build the ark to give people a chance to repent to God and stop the flood, but he was unsuccessful. The rain began to fall on the 11th of Cheshvan as Noyach began to enter the table with his family and every type of animal. The downpour lasted 40 days and 40 nights, killing all humans and animals that were not in the ark, that were not in the teva. The water continued to stir and boil for 150 days until God commanded it to subside. Noyach then sent out a raven to determine the extent of the water's retreat. However, the raven did not fly far before returning back to the teva, before returning back to the ark. So Noyach waited again and then sent out a dove three separate times. The first time, the dove left and returned empty-handed. The second time, it returned with an olive leaf in its beak, indicating that new growth began to sprout in the world. And the final time, the dove did not return, signaling to Noyach that the land became dry. And on the 27th of Cheshvan, Noyach and his family left the Teva as God commanded him to re-inhabit the world just one year since entering the Teva. However, a question comes to mind. The Torah tells us that Noyach did all that God commanded him to do as the Pasuk writes, And Noyach did all that God commanded him, so he did. But why does the Torah, which is usually very concise and clear and particular with its wording, reiterate the fact that Noyach did as he was told twice in one Pasuk? Furthermore, just five psukim later, it repeats it again. And Noach did that all that God commanded. Why does the Torah emphasize multiple times that Noach did what he was told? Rashi on the Torah of Shlomo Yitzchaki, the leading commentary in the Torah, answers this question by looking at the context of each pasuk. He explains that the first pasuk is referring to Noach building the teva itself and stocking it with food. The second pasuk is alluding to Noach going into the teva when God told him to do so. And Rashi continues that Noach himself did not believe that God would destroy the world just after he created it. Nevertheless, God told Noach and therefore Noach followed God's commandments to the smallest detail doing precisely what he was told. And therefore the Torah praises Noach by emphasizing that he fulfilled God's commandments. However, the Nitziv, Rev. Natali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, a Polish rabbi from the mid-1800s, gives a deeper and profound explanation. He writes that the Torah underlines and stresses the fact that Noach did what he was told because he did it himself. He did not ask his wife, his children, or workers to build the teva, to build the ark, or bring the animals. Rather, he did each of God's directive himself, no matter how tedious and challenging they were. And furthermore, as you can imagine, building a massive teva, a massive ark, by yourself is no simple task. Yet Noach did so with passion and enthusiasm because God commanded him to do so. And although many challenged him during the ark's construction, they did not diminish his energy and spirit as the Pasuk writes, And God said to Noach, Go into the ark with your entire household, for you alone I have found righteous before me in this generation. This powerful lesson from the Nitziv, Rav Natali Tzvi Yehud of Berlin, is ever more important as we begin the month of Cheshvan. For Cheshvan is a month with no holidays to uplift and inspire us to connect to God, but Cheshvan is the perfect time to put all that we have gained during Tishrei into action, to practicalize all the spirituality, holiness, and revelation of Hashem that we just received into our daily life with passion, joy, and happiness. In our daily life, it is imperative that we do even the most mundane of tasks with energy and spirit. Even though our responsibilities may feel repetitive and boring, we should strive to do them with enthusiasm and zeal. 
For this outlook and mentality makes even the most challenging obligations seem effortless because of our energy and spirit. But most importantly, it gives us a level of purpose and meaning in the simple things of life that no money can buy. There's an amazing quote that I once read. The secret to finding your passion is that you bring passion into everything that you do. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Thank you.